Hello, welcome back, and let's talk about some stories. Today, I really want to talk about something that I discovered about a year ago that I never thought I would have liked, and I tried one book out, and then a second, and then a third, and next thing you know, I have gone through 10 audiobooks in this series, and today, I want to talk about the lit RPG genre, specifically the book He Who Fights With Monsters. If you're not familiar with lit RPG, it's also known as isekai uh, culture literature. It is basically taking an RPG, a role-playing game like Dungeons and & Dragons, and putting it into a book form. Now, He Who Fights With Monsters, it was my first introduction at all into this genre. This book series, which we'll be talking about the first book, and this is spoiler-free for the vast majority, uh, this book was written by a guy named Shirtaloon, that's his pen name, uh, the pen name of Travis Deverell. Uh, the book itself was available online initially. He wrote uh, in little snippets online and it started catching catching fire. Travis Deverell, he said that he thought about this book when he was writing an academic paper and he was so bored with the content that he decided, you know what, I there's gotta be something more fun than this to write. And so he said, I'm gonna go write some nonsense. And next thing you knew, this book form, which has sold tens, I wouldn't say hundreds of thousands of copies in the various formats of this book. I would describe He Who Fights With Monsters as Ready Player One meets Skyrim in a way. He Who Fights With Monsters takes place on a world that kind of emulates Earth, and the reason for that comes about later in like book four. And you see a lot of geog geography, like the book takes place in a region of Africa. Um, although you have many different regions that magic has helped to shape uh, in that in that specific continent. The way that magic works in He Who Fights With Monsters is that there is a realm of magic that eventually will reach a, a boiling point and bits of magic will pop into uh, into the world. Now it could take the form of monsters that need to be fought in a low magic area. They're going to be low level um, iron tier. They call it by the color of the magic essences is what they call that appears. You have a silver or iron, then bronze, then silver, then gold, eventually diamond ranking uh, in the magic system. And obviously the, uh, the iron is going to be the lowest level. So it could be monsters that pop out or occasionally you have essences or things that give you magic uh, magic abilities and that is a very unique way of introducing a magic system now on this world you have the adventure society and the adventure society is basically the guild that is used by governments to police and to contain the monster threats and occasionally every 10 years or so there's a surge in which monsters pour out in unprecedented amounts all across the globe and that's when adventurers will jump ahead in their levels the most because of the amount of monsters that they're killing. And this is the world that our main character arrives in. Once again, this will be mostly a spoiler-free uh, review discussion, although I will be talking a little bit more about what takes place in just the first chapter, so you're not really missing or being spoiled a lot. He Who Fights With Monsters starts off with Jason Asano, a half-Japanese, half-Australian man, waking up on the grass in the middle of a hedgerow completely naked to the point where every single bit of hair on his body is completely gone and not to be surprised he is very lost in trying to figure out what the heck happened and he comes to realize that there's this weird hud ai fixture that only he can see that he can start to interact with and it turns out with through a little tutorial that he is uh, that is the magic's way of helping his brain to connect with what he is seeing because all of a sudden now he's in a magic world. He fell asleep in Australia as a office supply worker uh, and he wakes up all of a sudden in a magical world where he's trying to make his way through a hedge where all of a sudden there's a quest system pops up and then there's these these crazy hamsters that are jumping out of him or gerbils are jumping out of him and demented pheasants and a weird plant thing that's trying to bite him and he gets a demonic trowel and then all of a sudden there's cannibals chasing him he jumps into a cistern there's all these things start happening to him and he's always thinking am I going to wake up at any point here? And what starts to take place is in a very RPG style. If you've ever played D&D or a video game in that style, it's one episode after another takes place that he starts to experience the world around him. Eventually he gets captured and he gets introduced to a circle of friends um, named Rufus. 
uh, Gary and Farah. Rufus is a master swordsman who uh, he just, you know, his family runs a school, just, you know. Uh, Gary is a Leonid, so he's a lion man who's this massive character who is a very lovable, lovable character who's a blacksmith but can fight and has these golems and uh, apparently he gives the best hugs. And then Farah, she's basically a human lava volcano cannon uh, who's also very good at the theory of magic in that world. And that all takes place just in the first couple chapters. Throughout the beginning of the adventures, Jason, he picks up his essences. A person can choose four, technically three essences, and the fourth will appear from that, and which will, sh cre will create and craft what his magic system will be. And what Jason gets is a little unconventional, I will say, and you'd have to read to find out a little bit more about what he does. But let's just say people are very leery and wary of him because he, his powers sound a little dark. In fact, they look dark and feel it, read, read the book or listen to the book. I listen to audiobook, which is amazing. Hopefully reading it is good as well. What Jason finds out is that he is an outworlder, that he is somebody who magic has transported into this world and he is given abilities and opportunities to experience this world in a unique way that the normal residents of that world cannot. And he then sets out to join the Adventure Guild to uh, to level up, to meet friends. He makes enemies along the way. And this story very much is about Jason experiencing this magical world, but always wondering, am I going to get home? But he also is experiencing and having an opportunity to live life in a way that he didn't have the opportunity or the way he didn't choose to live on Earth. In this world, as Jason explores around, you start to see different pockets of civilization, little tiny villages around oases that are centered around magic, all the way to the one bigger metropolis of the area called Greenstone, which comes across as this big, amazing, magical city. But as the series goes on, you find out that it's a little bit more of like a backwater hamlet, but it's a amazing exploration into this world that Travis Deverell uh, created in the magical world and the way it functions. Uh, characters like uh, the Burt Brothers, I'll just say. Um, there are nine of them that you can't tell one from the other except for the handsome one. Uh, I can't remember his Burt, hum, Humpert, Hump, Hump. One of them's a good looking guy, we'll just say that. But anyways, it's, it's really good world building and city building. Something you quickly learn about Jason is that he does not like authority purely based on the fact that they are in place. He wants to connect and honor people who have earned respect, but if somebody is over the top or basically demanding authority, say it be an official or a god, uh, then he is not going to bow to that. In fact, many times he's going to put himself in danger to protect those from people that he sees as taking advantage of their authority, and that it becomes a key thing. But one thing about Jason is that this uh, this is a little too convenient that he makes friends with everybody who is more commoner so easy. Like he'll fall, uh, his friends will fall asleep and wake up, and all of a sudden Jason is best friends with everybody in town and is cooking breakfast and and learning all these secret recipes and stuff like that. And Jason's quite a mix using magic to make these amazing drinks and it just becomes a little far-fetched um, but what he realizes is that he is in a world where magic gives him the opportunity to help people uh, the way that he could not help people on earth in fact the way that people on earth never get help and he takes advantage of that to the point where he goes out and will heal people yeah it levels up his magical skills but he will heal people uh, the best that he can just for out of the goodness of his heart, which is really cool. Um, he is a very staunch atheist, even in the, even the face of the gods of this world. Um, and he is a self-described horrible socialist. The world's worst socialist, as he would describe, describe himself. But that's something you experience throughout the book. Another thing that I take issue with, and you can tell that this, uh, this book and the series is from a place where Travis Deverell was just writing for fun because there are some things that are very repetitive. Like the humor, often Jason will say things that are very much based on earth culture and he understands that nobody will recognize. And in the book, constantly he says something snarky that only somebody from earth would realize. And somebody in the world, the magic world he finds himself in would was is like, what? You hear the word what or see the word what so many times it becomes very annoying. And that's really the first book that you have to ding it. Once you get into the second or third book, that drops down a lot. I do have to mention that a little bit. Um, and that does ding it down a little bit. But once you kind of get past that, you just expect, accept that it's a 
early author writing, uh, I wouldn't even say an issue, but it's just something that he puts in very often throughout the book. You just have to be able to skip past that. I will say that friendship is something that is very vital in this story. Not only Jason's friendship with his core group and the new friends that he makes along the way becoming an adventurer like Humphrey and Clive, but you also experience friendship between these other two women characters, Sophie Drexler and Belinda, uh, who they're indentured servants that eventually Jason gets the opportunity to help in some way, that's all I'll say. Uh, but friendship and built trust is something that is really highlighted through this. And the title of the book really does uh, bring significance because he who fights with monsters, is a, it's a phrase from a very famous poem. And it's basically a warning of he who fights with monsters, in paraphrase, should watch out from becoming what he fears and what he fights. And that is something that Jason has to learn to discover starting in this book. Um, there are some things that he does where he goes over the top in these weird hologram fighting things where he's just over the top, ridiculously evil, and everyone's like scared of him. He's like, oh, it's just playing to the camera. But the question is, was he really playing to the camera? And that's something. So this book goes along and the plot will ramp up eventually. It's more of an exploration of the world and of the magic system and of the monsters. But as time goes on, you do see things start to escalate where these questions of what is going on in this world. And there's seeds that are dropped that very much will ramp up throughout the book series, even up until book nine and 10, where I'm currently at. And it's a really amazing journey that you get sucked into. Um, it's not the most amazing reading, but it is very enjoyable reading and a good escape. The things that I find the best about He Who Fights With Monsters is the engaging story is one thing. The world building is phenomenal. The more you learn about it, the more you want to learn and delve deeper. And the audience is left wanting more. And that is a sign, I think, of a great world building. Uh, the humor is really interesting. I do like that. There are very likable characters in this story with the friendships that are made and the adventures, the adventures that are gone on and the monster fights and things that take place. That is what really draws you into this book. And it's a good stepping stone into this series that is now 11 books long and it has its ups and downs, but it is a very enjoyable read. One thing I will ding this book about is that the plot is very minimal. The antagonists are very one-dimensional. The people that Jason ticks off along the way or who enter in as the villain characters in this story, uh, they are a little one-dimensional. Uh, you also have Jason. He has very minimal character development. He comes across as a not perfect, but a very above everybody else like he he comes into a room and he just because of his attitude of not caring about authority all of a sudden gets accepted by all those people in authority uh it just it's it's lacking um and that's something that with time gets answered and addressed a little bit but it, it is something that's lacking and so that's why this book i rate it down further into like a 3.5 stars um i would say on a letter grade i would give it a c um, it is amazing the ratings that this book has. I believe on Amazon it has a 4.7 out of 5. On Goodreads it's 4.4 and on Audible it's 4.8 which shows the, the value of Heath Miller's uh, narration in his audiobook. But this is an amazing story that I would highly recommend that you check out. Um, and if you like lit RPG or anything like that, give it a whirl. It's, a, it's an enjoyable read and it is a good break from the monotony of work, other things that you um, can experience. So that's it for today. I just wanted to introduce this lit RPG genre and especially He Who Fights With Monsters, which I hope you give a try. Um, if you're interested in any more of the things that I like to talk about, there's some videos up here that YouTube recommends. I hope you have a fantastic night and check out a few other things. God bless. Read some books.